Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out a frame. This is from a company called Halo. They are a UK based company and the frame is called the Archon. So I'm going to be checking out the frame and looking at its features and then I'll take it for a fly and see how it performs. So this is the box that it comes in and you get a nice message thanking you for the purchase and then we've got some stickers here as well. Now this frame is interesting because it's a premium frame and I really think it's worth buying into premium frames. And it is cut by Armiton, so you know, very popular company for making frames. And this is the arm here. And you can see that the arms are separate, so you know it's not a unibody. So one good thing about that is if you break an arm, you don't have to replace the entire frame. The carbon is very good quality, so 3K. And it's chamfered as well, which is really nice. One thing you'll notice about the arms is this part here, which is actually designed to collapse to protect your motor. That's why it's hollow here, if you're wondering about that. Yeah, there's some really nice design choices with this frame. And it's the kind of thing that you don't get when you go for one of the cheaper frames. So we've got some battery straps here and they are Halo branded and they are the grippy kind so that your battery doesn't eject. And then we've got the side plates here for the camera and this is something that they really promote with this frame is camera protection and I know that is a big thing for a lot of people and you get a thicker part here that goes on the side there and some standoffs that go in here for the ultimate camera protection and the camera angle goes from 25 degrees to 55 degrees it is a freestyle frame and it's also a low rider frame I guess you would call it as well so the battery is sitting on the top which I know a lot of people like as well so that's those two plates there and then of course we've got the arm so it's all going to be a locking system we've got really nice high quality screws there that look like they are anodized so yeah that's nice and we've got some more screws and nuts in there and then we've got some standoffs and some TPU parts there that are included and there's plenty of spare TPU parts that you can get from their website they also give you the STL files for free if you want to print them yourself so then looks like got another arm there and then we have got what looks like the top and bottom plate and also the part that sandwiches in the arms as well and then another one of those so next I want to talk about the TPU accessories so we have got a nice GoPro mount here and it's got Halo on there and that is to fit through the standoff so that's for your session 5. There's also a lot of optional things so we have got these LED holders for the side which are quite nice and then we have got a mount for your SMA adapter and antenna and that is for sitting at the back. So it looks like a really nice frame let me put it together and that's going to allow me to talk more about the features and functions of the frame. So I'm going to start off with the core of the frame. So we have this bottom plate here and then the arms all lock in the middle. You have to make sure that the impact point is there. And then we have these screws. They are the shorter screws that are in the kit. And then we have got these standoffs here, and they're also the shorter standoffs that are in the kit. The longer ones are for the camera. And then I just need to do the same for the rest of the arms. 
So there's just something I want to mention at this point, this locking mechanism here, it sits really tightly, so in order to get this last screw in here, I took a 2.5mm hex driver and screwed that in, not a big problem, so yeah, these are 2.5mm hexes and then these are 2mm. And now I can take my standoff here and screw that on. So the next thing to do is to put the screws through here for the standoffs. Now you're given different size screws. So we've got these long ones here and I guess there's no real rule for where you use them. But yeah, these ones are slightly longer so it depends on your standoffs. And then we have these shorter ones here as well. I mean, it might be that they meant these longer ones for these standoffs here, but I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference there. Then you are given these nuts, and if you can see, there are some teeth on here. And the way that it works is the holes in this plate are a little bit bigger than the holes in the arms so that sits in there nicely and then we'll dig in when you put your screw in and again I'm gonna have to use a hex driver I think in order to get this screw through at this point so as you can see keep turning until they dig in and then I'm gonna do that for the rest of them and now the back two it's gonna take two of these red screws there and just screw these on careful to not ruin the thread there it's a little tight might need to use my hex driver here that's it so also at this point if you want to put the LED holder in that would go over there like so and same in this side slots over the top of the standoffs and then also your mount for the antenna at the back there and that is the main core of the frame pretty simple so next we have got the top plate and also the camera plate and those just slot in there like so and then we've got two standoffs here and then we've also got the side parts as well and we've also got some more TPU parts to put on there as well so Let's get and do that next. So I'm going to want to include the GoPro mount, so I'm just going to take the standoffs here and push them through like so. And then we've got the one at the back there and then those other bits of TPU printed parts I think are for covering the rest up so that's to go over there like that I guess just so this isn't going to move around on the standoff like that I think so I'm just putting this back piece on here and these TPU parts they are a little bit too big and you probably don't need them honestly but it's to stop the camera moving so what I did was I put this back one on without this part being slotted into here and then I left this screw loose and then this just slotted over the top and fits nice and flush so I can now tighten this up completely and then I can work on this front part next so that's the first screw gone in for the front standoff and then the second one gone in and then the bottom one and then the last one and it's to go something like that 
And then the last thing to do is to smush these two together. Should just slot in like so. Very nice. And then the top screws here. Okay, so that is the frame built. There wasn't any modification needed whatsoever. A couple of things that are very tight fitting, such as the arms and also the TPU part of the mount there. So let's talk about the functional parts of this frame. So, of course, we have the plate here for the camera and your camera is going to sit here so I think 25 degrees is the lowest that you can have this camera but that should be absolutely fine for freestyle it's not going to be a lightweight build this one the frame is 144 grams without any components on it but I should mention some of the other things so you can see here that we've got this dip in the top plate there and that is for your battery strap and then you've got another dip here it's a really nice touch to stop your battery strap from moving backwards and then you have got an indent here and that is for running a cable tie around your SMA adapter there or VTX however you like and yeah seems like a really nice frame we have got 4 mil carbon here and feels absolutely rock solid and if you don't want to go with the GoPro mount then there is a slot there for another strap to go through so you can just mount your GoPro flat on the top if you like so yeah that's pretty nice so you are probably thinking what components should I put on this copter? So, let's take a look at that. Yes, here is one that I made earlier. That's not true, actually. FPV Bloods, who designs this frame, actually built this copter so that I could go and take it for a fly. Very kind of him. I'm going to be sending this back to him, though, so I'm going to try and be careful with it. So, the components, we have got... HQ props, they are the 5x4.3x3 clear props and then we have got the Brother Hobby R3-2207-2400 KV and then for the ESCs we have got the Spedix GS30, so 30 amp running d 1200, so they're 32 bit. Then the flight controller is the Matek F4 05 OSD, so a built in on screen display. The VTX is a Unify HV, and then we have got the Fox Ear Thor antenna out the back, and it's running a XM Plus and a Runcam Swift 2 at the front there. So, Let's go and take this thing for a fly and see how it performs. The all up weight is 630 grams, so it's quite a heavy quad, but I think it is going to be fantastic for freestyle. So let's go and take a look at it. Okay, let's go for the line of sight with this one. Now, I know that it's not designed for line of sight, but I always like to test them first line of sight just to make sure that left is left and right is right etc but it seems to be okay let's go for a punch oh yeah that's got the power all right seems okay try a bit of Line of sight acro. This is just the tune that Chris put on there. Seems pretty nice. So I've got the GoPro on there because I'm going to be flying it with the GoPro today. So I want to make sure that there's no tuning issues. Line of sight with the GoPro. Oh, that is nice. 
Feels really dialed in line of sight. Oh, it dances. Very nice. Look at that. You can just put it where you want and it'll just do it. No, I don't want to be flying it too long line of sight. Because he's got the beeper set to D-shot commands. So you don't get your low voltage when doing line of sight on the beeper. Which is why I prefer to have a beeper than D-shot commands, because I fly line of sight sometimes. And this one flies very nice with line of sight. I have to say. Oh, wonderful. Right, let's go in for a landing and I'll do some FPV with it. You know, flying the Archon has made me realise how much I miss flying a heavier copter. There's just so much inertia there that you don't get with a lightweight build. You know, lightweight builds are very floaty. And I've been concentrating on lightweight builds for probably the last nine months and I've definitely missed how these heavier copters fly for freestyle and this setup is a perfect example of that. I would say that this is definitely one of my favorite copters that I've ever flown. I prefer it to my Kiss Alien, I prefer it to the ZMR, and that is partly down to the frame. So it's a squished X, so it should handle nicely. It's like a hybrid, you know, and it's also partly down to FPV Blood's tune that he put on here, and I'm gonna give away his secrets now. So I'll overlay his PIDs here. He also mentioned that the TPA value was important to get this copter flying nicely so I'll overlay that here as well. As for the components that we use, there's a little bit of noise on the video and that is something always tricky to combat on a 5 inch model. But it brings me nicely onto the subject of capacitors as I go into the fog there. Yes, another foggy day for me. Yeah, you can actually go onto Halo's website and download a TPU STL file for mounting capacitors on the individual ESCs. There's also loads of room at the front of the frame for a capacitor if you want to do that as well to eradicate any noise. Yeah, but other than that, flies absolutely fantastic. It's heavy on amps, but that's absolutely fine. It just wants to be ragged. I think the flight time was about three and a bit minutes, something like that, and that's using a 1300 milliamp 4S Tattoo R-Line battery. And I think some of you might mention that there's no silicon battery mat in this package, but my opinion is that it doesn't really need it because you've got two rubber straps and the battery didn't move at all. But yeah, if you go for the Impulse RC or something like that, you do get a battery mat. But to me, that is not a important factor for buying this frame. So I will link the frame in the below and also all the components used because it seems like a really nice setup. And I would advise you to support local people if you can. You know, they ship worldwide and it is local to UK and Europe and I recommend it. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.